Rachel. Welcome to another kit review. So as you can see today we're having a look at another kit from Tamiya. This is of course as you can see Tamiya's 81mm mortar carrier M21. Uh, the release date for this one is 2023. This is part of Tamiya's reissue of some classic US Army half tracks that came out in the 1970s. This particular one came out in 1976 under kit number MM183. The kit number for this one is 35083 and as I said it came out in 2023. So um, not a bad pickup if you can pick up one of these. Uh, I got this one for $34 Australian which is a pretty reasonable price. So you do get the four figures with it plus of course the um, mortar which you can have displayed just like this outside of the vehicle or mounted in the vehicle it does carry a 50 caliber machine gun as well um, this one is the m21 it's about uh, basically an m3 half track chassis carrying the mortar not to be confused with the earlier m4a1 which also carried the 81 um, but that was on a m4 chassis slightly smaller much more cramped and actually didn't work as expected so that's why they moved on to the m21 all right so as you can see classic tamiya white box really nice artwork showing the vehicle and the crew firing the water on the side as usual in japanese basics about the vehicle itself and some brief history on the other side so you've got your standard half track your um, m16 mounting a quad 50 caliber and a vietnam era m113 command vehicle um, all of these kits i've had at one time and i do actually have this one and we'll be getting this one shortly from the new reissue this particular M113 appears on eBay probably every few months, so it is quite a common pickup. So let's have a look and see what's in the box. One through which has got your crew, the mortar itself. You do have a bazooka in there as well as an accessory Tommy gun. This particular sprue is your two sprues in this one actually this is the main back part sides and back of the half track plus some spares as in jerry cans tarps etc next row out is of course as you can see the front with your driver figure and the clear plastic windscreen it's not injected molded it is basically a cut out one sides of the half track of course and the last bag out is your vinyl tires and tracks and the chassis and running gear instructions Japanese English German modern warnings about what plastic to use or rather what sprue to use for your radio aerials and the decal sheet all right in a second we'll have a look at the instructions and the decal sheet let's have a look at the instructions we'll put the japanese ones aside because i don't speak japanese these ones have been adjusted um, originally they would have been all English but this is also English and German nice photo of the actual kit built and overleaf you'll see we start with the chassis it does have a couple of parts that need to be removed mainly because this is the same chassis that they use for the M16 uh, 50 caliber quad and also the M3A1 uh, half standard personnel half track so there are some adjustments that you need to do and you've got your exhaust pipe going onto the engine your differentials etc being put together 
You got your wheels for the track section. Fairly straightforward stuff. The diffs are going on. Wheels, etc., going on. Vinyl tires. You'll see in here it does have color callouts. Um, they are by name, and it has been updated to include the Tamiya codes as well, like X, F, one, and so on. Then you've got the front. Now you have a choice between an open slat grille or closed. Back of the half track. Front of the half track. So if you built one of the earlier, I mean one of the earlier, one of the other half tracks, the M16 or the uh, standard personnel carrier, this is exactly the same. Spare jerry cans, 50 caliber. This is the back of the mortar carrier. As you can see, there are a lot of mortar shells carried in the back of this. It would, it would have been very, very cramped. Overleaf, you've got the back and the sides going on to the front. You do have a choice with the front doors. You can have them fully closed or cut them very carefully so they can have a folded down top side. There is your driver figure. He goes in there, accessories, etc. going on, as well as the front rollers. Here's your mortar crew. So you can have it freestanding outside of the vehicle, which is the way it was. Or you can have it mounted in the vehicle. So in the M21, the mortar was mounted midsection, facing forward, with the filler 50 caliber behind. Slightly different with the M4, their mortar was actually mounted at the back and pointing backwards, which made it very difficult for the crew to get in and out, which is one of the reasons why I believe it was the 2nd Armoured Division took their M4s, modified them for the um, mortar to face forwards, and then from there the Defence Department decided to actually rework the whole thing and mount it on the M3 chassis couple of fake wooden tree uh, I guess they're supposed to be tree trunks going on the side and a few other accessories and that's it fairly straightforward build this is the markings going on so in this kit the decals you get two World War two and one post-war decal set there were only 110 of these built 57 of which were used by the Free French forces. Um, they did only operate in Europe. At the end of the war in 1945, they found out that the 81mm mortar was no longer up to spec as far as modern warfare was concerned, so these were deemed obsolete. I believe some of them did carry on with other nations. I even think some of them actually ended up with the 1950s German army for a short while until they were all scrapped of course and overleaf being classic Tamiya instructions spree layout and all the different um, parts numbered and named so that's the instructions let's have a look at the actual decals So here's your decal sheet, copyright 2001, and there's all your numbers for the vehicle, and of course your white stars. So really a new print for these, even though it's copyrighted 2001, and very, very nicely done. So I'll give you a shot of that, and then in a second we will have a look at the actual sprues. So let's start with the windscreen. Clear plastic, mostly cut out, so all you have to do is just finish off cutting it out. As you can see, it's marked M3. This is the same windscreen that you get in your M3 personnel carrier, your M21, and also your M16. So very clear nicely done but you have to make sure that you don't scrub this because this plastic once it's scraped there's nothing you can do with it so i'll give you a shot of that
Next we'll have a look at these. So this is your vinyl tracks and wheels, poly caps. So exactly the same as the other half US half tracks. It does have a name, brand name, which is uh, Firestone on the sides. Nothing else, no other details about the tyre sizes and stuff like that. But even that is quite a nice touch. Remember this is a 1970s kit from Tamiya. So they didn't really have to do anything like that. So there is your vinyl tracks. Very flexible, 2023 um, issue. No problems there. Not even a seriously marked mould seam. Just a little bit of clean up. Should get rid of that quite easily. So I'll give you a shot of that. Next crew we'll have a look at is your mortar crew, bazooka, that's the base of the mortar, that's the mortar itself and the stand, accessories for the crew, tommy gun and the first thing I want to show you is, if I can get it in focus for you, is the copyright which is 1976. So that's not bad. There's your crew figures. There, as I said, 1970s figures. So you might want to update them with some newer figures. You get a bazooka, which you may not want to use in this mortar carrier. I can't imagine them carrying a bazooka in the back. These are the ends of the bazooka. So it does actually have a hole, so to speak. There are your bazooka rounds, base of the mortar, mortar shells, radios, etc. This is the mortar itself, and this is the end of the mortar. So I'll turn it over. As you can see, it does have a hole, so you don't have to worry about drilling out the end of the mortar itself. Spades water bottles, a little bit of flash around the um, bayonets, a little bit of flash around the figures, but nothing serious. So there's your mortar and the um, mortar gun crew. So next brew out is a little one. This is just your spear wheel, which also says Firestone, and your canvas tarps, etc. There's your wire cable and spare jerry cans for the half track. And next we're having a look at this one. So this is the base of the back, of course, and the sides. These pieces out here are your logs, tree trunks, whatever you want to call them. That is the front cable holder, a cable reel holder, I should say, and the back of the half track. So there's your fighting compartment with mortar shells in it. Um, these holes of course would go a lot further down because they'd be empty but um, not much you can do about that really nice detail though that would definitely have been a very busy little fighting compartment firing a mortar from that that's the main bottom part anyway there's your sides with some nice rivet detail there's your 50 caliber machine gun 
that's not too bad. Might want to, if possible, if possible, drill out the end. That's the back. I'll turn it around so it's more reasonable. That's, oh, sorry, coming to get into focus. There you go. That's the back of the half track. And the front cable roller holder and some seats. These here are optional. They are actually the wire canvas frame that goes over the back compartment of the half track. So you can have those on, um, but of course they wouldn't use them when they were in firing the mortar, but you can have them for something slightly different. And it does show you in the instructions how to make a canvas cover for this if you want to. Although if you did that, you wouldn't be able to see this really nice interior. So that is an option. You can put the frames over the fighting compartment if you want to. Right, so I'll give you some shots, just some shots, shots of that. Next, we'll have a look at this one. This, of course, is the front of the half track. There are your two different types of grills, your instruments, your driver figure, seats, and other accessories. Steering wheel, some nice checker plate and driving compartment. There are your seats with some really nice canvas touch to it your doors and I'll turn the doors around so yes you can cut the doors and make them half open which is a really nice touch I do like that turn that around there is your driver figure so he's not too bad so these figures are not bad for 1970s you might want to upgrade them to something a little bit more with some resin or even just like mini art or something like that but you can get away with these ones they're not too bad at all and that's pretty much what you see that's the front i'll give you some close-up shots of this so don't worry too much if you think you've missed something And the last brew is this one, which is your chassis and all your running gear and your um, main wheels. So let me see if I can get the copyright. See, Tamiya has blanked the copyright off on this one. Really nice detail on the wheels though. Really nice bolt detail. I like it's not super sharp, but um, it will come out quite nice with a wash little bit of flash on that main spring section there but otherwise really nice detail do like those there is a pronounced mold seam on the leaf springs suspension and hubs and that is your engine with again some really nice detail so you won't see that engine unless you turn the vehicle over, but 
it is nice to know that it's actually there. And that's the last sprue. So that's it guys, there are one, two, three, four, five main sprues, plus your vinyls in the kit, plus the decal sheet of course, and the windscreen, and that is it, that is Tamiya's M21 US half track 81mm mortar carrier. Originally came out in 1976. This is the 2023 release. Kit number for this one, 35083. Really nice little pickup. So, as I said, that brings us to the end of this review. As usual, I just want to thank you for your likes, your subscriptions, and your comments. They're always welcome. And also, as usual, until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I will see you later.